Hi, welcome back to another episode of the Big DK Energy Podcast. My name is Danny Kay, or the DK and the Big DK Energy. And today's topic is art and the art of graphic design, specifically logo design with the hints of graphic design overall in general. And to guide us on today's quest of art learning, we have a graphic designer originally from Jacksonville. She eventually made her way to the University of Central Florida, to which after she graduated and remains here in Orlando. And we're here to pick her brain and uh, all of her knowledge graphic. So without further ado, please help me in introducing today's guest, Miss Allie Caves. Hi, (laughs) I'm super excited. Super excited to have you here. Awesome. Excellent. So there's an A on your cup there. Is that for Allie or art? Um, Both, actually. <laughs> it depends on the mood. <laughs> and so what mood are you feeling today? I am feeling artsy. So it's going to be A for art. I also go by Arthur. <laughs> by what? Arthur. Arthur. Arthur, art. Okay, excellent. I just imagined the show like... <laughs> Aardvark Arthur. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That was a great show. And um, it was really sad when it ended. But the drawing style is really distinct. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And speaking of distinct styles, you know all about that since you're a graphic designer, right? Yeah. Oh, there are so many different kinds. I love it. So how did you get started in art? I know that's a very simple question, but you know, everybody has different beginnings. I think that it was pretty much like an easy pick for me. I was not like a science person, wasn't a math person. So I knew I wasn't going to be a doctor or an engineer. And one of the things that I liked is I feel like I'm a very creative, like critical thinker. I like puzzles and stuff like that. And I was really good at being like, oh, if I take a bunch of ideas, I wonder what that could look like. And so I liked drawing when I was little and kind of like symbols and stuff like that. So it was the first year in high school that they had a graphic design class. And I was like, that kind of sounds like fun. We were doing Photoshop and I was like, this is really awesome. I like this kind of stuff. Did you ever play around on Photoshop, like to make pranks and whatnot? Oh, yeah. I, Art memes. Oh, there we go. We, you know, like that trend where people were replacing their family's faces with like random weird things. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I changed my family's picture and like put sloth faces on all of us because <laughs> I really just wanted to see like... When it was practice, I was like, eh, let's see if I can do it. And also to see if my parents would notice. And instantly my dad noticed because like <laughs> he walked out and he was like, that's wrong. <laughs> so. And what were you like? No, dad, it's totally right. This is us. Yeah, I was like, he was like not having it. But he was also interested in Photoshop and doing that kind of stuff too. So Do you teach him? Now I can probably like show him a few things, but he doesn't do it as often as probably I do. But yeah, at the time I would ask my dad, I'm like, how do I do this? I don't I don't understand. And Photoshop was definitely the hardest out of like the different softwares that I was using. What year did you start using it, would you say? Oh, I graduated high school in 2016, so I probably started using it really in 2016, my senior year. Okay, got it. Because I know that like, even compared to now, the whole Adobe Creative Cloud is still kind of young-ish. Yeah, it's really awesome. I love Adobe, honestly. There are all these like other ways to like use it, other softwares, other companies, but I think that Adobe's my number one. Like, I'll never stray from them. They've literally changed my life. Mm-hmm. Especially you, you've you done freelance work as well. In fact, you have your own company, Caves Designs. Yes. And so you were talking about the progression of from where you started to where you're like now and you're doing some kind of project in terms of like re-updating your portfolio, is it? Mm-hmm. I think that that's so important. I've definitely neglected my own work for a while, you know. When you're not freelancing and you also have like another maybe like in-house design job, you kind of like that takes over your world and you kind of like start forgetting about your side projects and your creative dream projects. And I think that it's so important that you kind of like do put time aside because you can get so burnt out. If you're constantly doing the same thing over and over and over again, you should do fun things. And I kind of like took a step back and I was like, you know what? I miss making fun companies and just designing things that I just think of. So I kind of looked at all my Instagram stuff and I was like, how did I think that this was good? And so I'm now like redoing a lot of these projects and seeing how like it's been like three years Mm. since I've like really looked at it. So seeing what three years of experience in like the real world or whatever, like in that company setting, just like seeing what that can do 
for like just a designer in general is really cool. I bet. It's kind of funny because what's one thing that you noticed from a piece in your yesteryear that you were like, wow, I can't believe I did that. Like what's one specific thing that you would have done to update it and make it look better? Mock-ups. Mock-ups are huge in like... So what exactly is a mock-up? So a mock-up is pretty much like you take a design and you're putting it on like, let's say you're designing a box Mm -hmm. and a mock-up is you pretty much actually putting it on a box and putting it like in a picture setting for a client to see what that actual object is going to look like once it's designed. Because most of the time you're going to be designing in 2D and for designers, it might work for us because we can imagine what it looks like, but not everybody's brain works the same way. So some people are more of like, they have to actually see it to get it or like be able to feel it. So you'll have to like print it out. But taking pictures of the actual object designed is great. Or like putting the logo on a t-shirt and like seeing what it actually is going to look like in a real life setting. Okay. You know, that's just for anybody who wants to delve into that. So, you Mm -hmm. know, there's some vocabulary that they're not well aware of. And actually another thing that probably a lot of starting graphic designers would ask is, what, or not what is the difference, but when is it better to use Photoshop over Illustrator and vice versa? So Illustrator is going to be more vector images. And so you want like that crisp, like no matter how small you make it, it's still going to be a perfect line filled in everything. Whereas Photoshop is going to be more of like rasterized images, like pixels in like actual pictures. So like photo editing, like changing the lighting or changing the color of something. I do all of my designs and logos and stuff in Illustrator. And then to put them in a mock-up in like an image, I'll use Photoshop. Mm, So yeah, I mean, you can, you can do that in Illustrator. It's just so much harder and that's what Photoshop is for. Got it. And also it's for making memes and everything. Oh yeah, of course. (laughs) Yeah, I actually learned a little bit of Photoshop for my for my degree because I was a digital media major. And so I remember guys in the fraternity would be like, hey, you know Photoshop, right? And I go, mm-hmm. yeah. Could you Photoshop this guy's head on a Gyarados? I'm like, sure. And it's exactly like you said, it's practice. Oh, yeah. I have an app that like makes it super easy to mask out things on my phone. So I'm just like making memes on my phone of my friends. And if anything, I've used Photoshop to like help my friends like edit someone out of like a picture and so, like, like after a bad breakup or something like that mm-hmm. oh <laughs> you just turn their face into something else you know i bet you could make a business about that you know it's just like um uh, yeah i can't think of a name right now but it'll, it'll strike me at some point oh yeah mistakes <laughs> mistakes <laughs> mistakes and then mistakes <laughs> yeah yeah i don't know why that'd be a very interesting niche to get into but i feel like somehow at the same time it would work oh yeah I feel like a lot of people would use that. Yeah, but then also people use graphic design such as, um, actually, screw that. We're going <laughs> to go back a little bit. So I know that, you know, you were talking about logos and stuff like that. What's a logo that brings you joy? <sighs> a logo that brings me joy. Here, let me, or let me be more specific in two different ways. So what's a logo that you believe looks very clean and is exactly hits every check mark for graphic design? And what's one that's associated with a brand that you just like in general? Oh my God. I know that there's one and I can't remember it. Well, first off, I love Airbnb's logo. I think that that's a great company. And like, it's so cool because it's kind of like the needle of like a compass, like you're going in places, but it's also an A. I didn't realize about the compass part. I love Airbnb, like the way that the app works. I love their branding, their commercials. I think that their marketing is great A. Love it. Yeah, sorry, Verbo. Sorry, Verbo. <laughs> sorry about that. Yeah, it's all right. But yeah, no, I think that they're like the perfect amount of clean, but also creative. So I think that Airbnb might be my answer, unless I can think of whatever. There was one that I was like, God, their logo is just like perfect. But now, of course, I can't remember it. Got it. And the second part was, what's a logo that just brings you joy because it's associated with something that you like? What is it? EF? The Tours? The Tours, yeah. Yeah. I think that that's a cool logo and I think that it, I like it because it's associated with travel. You like traveling? I love traveling. What's the coolest place you've traveled to? Honestly, I went out of the States like once, so I have to like think about it in like American. I think... Northern California was probably one of the coolest, either that or Maine. Maine's beautiful, but um, see, the thing is I was born in California, but then I left like a few minutes afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> so and so, I've never got to see the northern part, but that's like 
Sonoma? It's or? like San Francisco. Okay. And like the, what are they called? The... Not sequoia trees. Like yeah, the, the redwoods. The redwoods, yeah. Are they sequoias? I'm pretty sure they are. I'm sorry. I'm I just draw pictures friend. for a living. I don't know trees. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you draw on dead trees. I draw on dead trees. <laughs> yep, they are sequ- called sequoias. Sequoia Nash- National Park. Sorry, I can't. <laughs> You're good. I can't. Do you how many people have drank on here? Just... I- Oh, there's actually an entire clip where we had Trulies and we just... Oh, yeah. You know, as Jacksonville people, we love to drink. Were you a Jags fan growing up too? I think that, like, by association, you had to be a Jags fan, but they were awful for so long that you were like, you got to just embrace the suck. Exactly. I'm a Florida Panthers fan, which is funny because um, whenever I say, yeah, I'm a Panthers fan, people go, oh, Carolina's great. I'm like, yep, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) So... Question, did you like the old logo better or do you like this newer Jags logo better? better? Me personally, I'm a retro kind of person and I like that that kind of like vintage retro look, but now I think that it does look cleaner. The thing about football logos, icons and stuff, I feel like they could be so much better, especially like the uniforms. Tampa Bay, I think, does a really great job with their marketing for their football team. But that was the long answer. Short answer is, yeah, I like the newer logo a little bit better than the retro one. Oh, really? Yeah. That's kind of weird because you started off with retro, but I like the newer one. Well, and that's the thing about style and you have to kind of like put aside what you like and your preference and kind of think of like what's the actual reasoning for a logo, for a symbol and stuff like that. I think that this newer logo fits what's needed of it now. I don't think that the retro one is going to fit like today's, what, like what's the word? Today's atmosphere. Yeah. Today's vibe. It's more of like, think about all the technology and stuff and all of their marketing. They're probably going to be able to do more effects it needs to look cleaner. It needs to look like a little bit more ferocious. You're right. And actually, now that I think about it, if it's a vector, you probably need all those separated pieces in order for it to be effective in like a GIF mm-hmm. or as a regular like short little graphic thing. Yeah. And it's like it has to fit more of that vibe because as a football team, you want to be ferocious. You're going to see like a lot of like growling and whatever since they're like a jaguar and like the spots probably come off and all that and it's not going to like really give that full effect because a lot of like vintage looking kind of like the old school like they're a little bit more relaxed sometimes and they're trying to like beef it up a little bit fair enough i could totally see that and it's actually funny that you mentioned how there's that period of time that all has changed between you know the two logos because i was actually watching a video yesterday Um, about why comedy movies that were made, you know, in the early 2000s that were really funny, when they made their sequel, you know, years later, it absolutely tanked. And so one of the reasons, or a good amount of the time, is because uh, in in the sequel, not much has transpired between the first movie and the second movie. But at the same time, in real life, 10 years has changed. And so the humor back then is not exactly this humor that it is now, because back then they can't joke around around by saying let's take a selfie because they'd be like what the hell is a selfie yeah exactly like times change and you kind of have to like go with that and kind of like getting trends but you have to have that like good backbone like a funny character even if it's like a look like a classic look that you know it's always going to be funny or even if it's like a progression of the movie like you have a timeline in it Just as long as you have that good backbone, you're good. And you can change like the trendiness, which can be like the jokes, the humor part of it. Mm -hmm. So, And so I know you just said having the classic look. And now that I think about it, since you do like retro, do you ever like go back to art styles of old to help um, inspire new designs? Oh, yeah. Art Nouveau is probably my favorite kind of like art style. It's um, Alphonse Mucha. I know I'm just throwing out like a bunch of like weird words, but... Alphonse Mucha was an artist that helped really like create Art Nouveau, which is like those cool absinthe um, posters. They're like a lot of women and it's kind of like a, I don't know how to explain it, like the typography in Art Nouveau. It's more organic. It's going to be more of like those muted natural colors. And it's kind of like that 2D kind of like drawing and the girl's hair will come out and like you can see like the individual curls and stuff in it. A lot of 70s bands, like 70s rock bands, they have a lot of Art Nouveau. Like which ones? Um, Fleetwood Mac. They do a lot of that. I've seen a lot of Jimi Hendrix, like the psychedelic kind of Art Nouveau blend. Oh, okay. And I believe I kind of know what you're talking Mm -hmm. about. It's like sometimes you'll see like the same image, but like 
uh, it'll be three different versions. The one's like bright yellow, one's like bright blue, and another one's like magenta, for example. Well, that so that's like the CMYK, the magenta, the cyan, whatever, like those weird ones. Yeah, like, but do you know what I'm talking about? Like the trippy effect that, you know, there'd be like three of them stacked on top of each other as if they're like moving in like a sequenced form. Yeah, so that's going to be like a psychedelic kind of style. Art Nouveau is more of like, I'm trying to think if I can see something around here. It might know. be Art Nouveau. Yeah, I got nothing here. <laughs> well, if anything, it's kind of like that organic drawing more. That, I can find a picture of it if you okay. want. If it makes it easier. All right. Um, she's calling She's ha- calling a lifeline. I am calling a lifeline. See, this is why it's so much better for me to just show people sometimes. Oh, okay. Or, got it. Okay. Mm-hmm. I totally see what you mean. I feel like Led Zeppelin did this too. Yeah. And I think that I probably lean more towards that because I like a lot of classic rock. And, me too. Oh, yeah. Like Fleetwood Mac is my favorite. I know that they're starting to get a little bit more like mainstream now. And like a lot of people are starting to know more about them. But they've always been my favorite band. I feel like they've always been mainstream, though. Yeah. I feel like, you know, especially Stevie Nicks. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Didn't she date the front man, too? She dated the lead guitarist, Lindsey Buckingham. That's what it is, yeah. Yep. Messy. <laughs> Messy. Me- I'm on that side of TikTok that is like the girls explaining, I think it's the 1997 performance of Silver Springs. I think I saw some, saw one, too, but like it was um, their version of The Chain. And so like you could kind of see the tenseness in their eyes. And I'm like, oh, are they going to go the entire show without killing each other? Let's watch. Oh, dude, they hated each other. That's what made Rumors like such an amazing album. Rumors is the is the album that's like white and it has a picture of Stevie and Mick, the drummer, because that was when it was going downhill. Like all of them hated each other. Christine and John were getting a divorce. Lindsay and Stevie broke up and Stevie's like with Mick and it was just nonsense. And so it was kind of like reading their diary about one another. So like, that's why I think it's such a great album. But yeah, they had a lot of cool art. And especially in the 70s, I think that people were taking more risks, especially with record covers and all of that. Oh, yeah. Like, for some odd reason, whenever I see, like, a lot of old album covers, they have, like, a lot of, like, mythical, like, um, drawings and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Like, I forgot the name of the band, but they have, like, you know, three Viking Raiders drawn in that old art style from the 80s. Yeah. Like, Conan the Barbarian kind of stuff, Mm -hmm. you know, kind of grizzled, gory at the same time. And then, oh, yeah, a lot of old metal albums had that, too. For example, I think... Was it Dio or just an Ozzy Osbourne album? Oh, I love Ozzy. You love Ozzy? <laughs> oh, yeah. Like the, um, God, which one is Crazy Train on? Where he's like on the floor and he's got like the cross and That's stuff right. like that. I don't know the name of the album, but I know exactly what you're talking about because um, another song on there that I like is Mr. Crowley. Mm-hmm. I think that one of the bands around like, I think that they were way more 80s. But Van Halen did such a- Love Van Halen. If my dad watches this episode, he's going to absolutely love that I'm talking about Van Halen. But they did such a great job. I can't remember which album it is, but you know the one it's- I think it's Dive- like something Diver. Is it the red one? It's the red one with all the lines on it. Yep. And so now when you see that pattern, you think of Van Halen. Exactly. And Eddie had his guitar looking like that. And now it's like every time you see that pattern, you kind of think of them. Or even if you don't know it or you've seen the album, you kind of associate those like colors, like that look with them. Or at least like rock and roll or a it's, band. Yeah, it's a grungier, you know, mm-hmm. look. And uh, who do you think was the better singer? Sammy Hagar or David Lee Roth? David Lee Roth. Okay. I will die on that hill. <laughs> I agree, except I love the song uh, Right Now. See, I think that Sammy's... A great singer. I don't think that he's bad. I just... David had more pizzazz. He was like that showman, like that performer. Like he made it interesting to watch. It was really sad when it even passed in 2020. But um, I was watching an old uh, clip of them playing Hopper Teacher. And, um, you know, the band was just jamming out. But then David kind of looked... <laughs> He was just <laughs> jumping around. He was he was just so animated. I was like, dude, you're you look like you're about to keel over. Yeah, he's just like having a great time. Oh, speaking of guys that are about to keel over, do you listen to the Rolling Stones? I'm not a big Stones Beatles 
fan. If, if I had to like pick out of the two of them, probably the Stones, but I'm not like huge into them. That's fine. I mean, they have those songs that are iconic, but at the same time, they're not my favorite band. Mm-hmm. Like I wore a Rolling Stones shirt in middle school, but that's because that was one of the band shirts that was at Target. You yeah, know? exactly. You know what I mean? The- Target picks like the most random bands to sell shirts for. Yeah, it would be like Bob Marley and then it'd be like Jimi Hendrix. Like they had the Ramones on there. Like, yeah, every one of their songs sounds the same. Yeah, I was like, okay, like this is, I don't think that anyone who's buying this shirt probably listens to them, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> sounds good. We're going from art to music. <laughs> I mean, music is art. I mean, I think that music would be like my next thing. Okay. Yeah, like that I would probably do. Really? Uh, a music in terms of like a shirt design? Oh, it. I think that it would be more of like, I wish that album covers were kind of where they were back in the day because I thought that it would be so cool to to design record labels and just like, or not labels, more of like album art. Hmm. Because I think that that's so cool and makes a band like really interesting, but like you have to kind of be in that niche of vinyl collecting nowadays, I think, to really appreciate it. Eh, I mean, I guess to a certain extent, but then there's some pretty trippy album covers now. For example, um, Tame Impala has that one with the ball like kind of going into the space-time continuum. Is that what, what mm-hmm. it would be called? You know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, that's a cool like graphic design, photo editing kind of one. I think that Childish Gambino's Redbone was really cool. Is it where the ladies like lit up with the blue, blue. lights? Oh, oh that's I, what it is. I think that that thing is so cool. I was like, okay, I can get with this. So yeah, I thought that that would be really cool to design when I was younger, just because I had music around like a lot, and I was like, oh, you know, that was that whole like creative side. Everything's coming together, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. We're stitching together the quilt here, but oh, and you you keep mentioning artists with them. Um, Sorry, the coffee is making my ass <laughs> reflux act up. So sorry. No, you're good. Thank you for bringing it. Of um, course. So, uh, I forgot of the... Okay, you're an artist, so what's the name of the guy that made that famous Campbell Soup painting? Oh, my... You know what I'm talking about, right? Yes. Oh, my gosh. Why can't I think of his name? It's, is it Andy Warhol? Yes. <laughs> Okay, awesome. I'm just making sure that I got it right. But turns out he made an album cover, which is very famous, but it's just a banana. Have you ever heard of the Velvet Underground? Mm-mm. So the Velvet Underground is like one of the first, like, it's like one of the predecessors to many rock bands. And mm-hmm. even though you might not have heard them, a lot of famous rock bands have, you know, that was their influence. So really? I'll show you a few songs, but I know for a fact that their album cover, which I forgot the name of the actual album, but it's just a big banana, so it's kind of hard to miss. It's just a giant banana. Or, you know, just a bit banana taking up the space, if that makes sense. You know, there's that, like, TikTok trend that's going around. It's like, everything can't be an album cover. Covered. That's right. Like, I think that those are so fun. But it's funny because a lot of those could be, and I'm like, I know that's the joke, but these are actually working. Honestly, all of them. There was this one guy, and he was eating something, and then he, like, choked on it, and it was coming out of his mouth because he coughed it out, and mm-hmm. I was like... I don't know why, like, that probably would be an album cover. I feel like that'd be something Green Day would do. Oh, yeah. What is it? Something Idiot? Is it American Idiot? American Idiot. Or like, another funny one was um Dookie. Oh, yeah, Dookie. <laughs> um, it's the one with, like, the mushroom cloud, and it's, like, the illustration. I'm pretty sure that's Dookie. Yeah. Because it's, like, that's one of the things on the cover. There's mm-hmm. literal crap going everywhere. It's just, like, all over the place. And then, have you ever heard of Greta Van Fleet? I love them. As soon as I heard them, I was like, is Robert Plant still kicking it? Yep. I was like, how are they making a new album so old? It's like, no, this is another band. Bullshit. First off, phenomenal. Literally love them. They could pretty much sing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, and I would be like, yeah, this is great. <laughs> but um, they do great designs. I thought that Battle at Garden Skate was such a cool concept for an album, especially kind of like the design of it. At first, it looks like a black album, and then you can like see the little gold illustration of like Garden's Gate on it, but they made a symbol for every single song on the album. Wow. And it's like all the symbols kind of represent what the song vibe is or like represents the song. And I thought it was so cool because I just went to their concert and like at the beginning, they have a song called when the curtain falls and so they, that's the one i know especially yep well they had a giant curtain at their um at their concert concert and they had like the giant symbol of like the key to garden's gate in the middle and then they had all the symbols for all the songs on the album and then right when the concert starts 
the curtain falls and then they start playing. Oh, that's pretty badass. I was like, this is really cool. And they have like some really cool designs that they always kind of feature on their Instagram. Hmm. I wouldn't have thought about that. It's like they have a whole, not a cult or cryptography department. Would that be what it is? I don't know. Some odd reason this is reminding me of a book that I bought a while ago because I love to draw as well as a kid. And also I just love symbolism. And so I actually have a book. It's collecting dust back in my parents' house. It's literally like the symbology of stuff. So it would be like animals, different runes and that kind of stuff. And I really want that book back because it's, even though that all that stuff, you know, might be made up or mumbo jumbo, I still find that stuff pretty cool. It's honestly like really interesting and definitely to like even colors, like colors represent different things and how like in our brains we start associating different colors with different things. I was going to say, are you a big believer in color theory? Oh, yeah. Like think about it. Like think of the color red versus blue. It's like everyone sees the bad guy as red, but everyone that's your friend is blue. Yeah, exactly. That's usually how it is in video games or at least the earlier ones. Oh, yeah. And like think about like Star Wars. All the bad guys have red. I think about it in nation's flags. A lot of them have red. In it because red is a very powerful color and it's like, don't mess with us. We're the best. And they use red a lot of the times to like convey that. It's a very bold and like- Aggressive. Yeah. But it's also, it just means a lot, but it's like a very passionate, very bold, kind of like how love is kind of perceived. A lot of people- It is a bold emotion. Sure, it's a positive one, but at the same time, it's not just something that's hidden. It's out there. And there are different like- tones of color you know you have like the jewel tones they're going to be more of the elegant regal kind of like a lot of jewelry branding goes into jewel tones so it's like different shades of stuff i thought you were talking about gradients because how things can go lighter or darker oh yeah it can kind of go into the gradient of it but it's also like the best one i can think of is like purple so there's like a red purple or there's a blue purple (laughs) You're right. It actually, it's funny that you're talking about all this because when I worked at Sherwin Williams, I helped people out with color and I realized, mm-hmm. oh my God, there's no such thing as a pure white. Oh yeah, no. <laughs> it's And everyone sees it differently. It's so strange. Have you ever noticed that? That is true. And plus, you know, don't, not to be sexist, but don't women see more colors than guys? Yeah, I guess biologically or whatever, like our eyes take in different shades. Like men are more likely to be colorblind than women. So designing... <laughs> You have to kind of like take that in mind, but Adobe has this really cool thing. They have Adobe Color, like .com or something like that. Yes, I have used that. And did you know that they have like a disability thing? And really? And you can see kind of like they go through the different kinds of colorblind. And so you can pick a color and it'll show kind of like what a colorblind person perceives it as. So when you're looking for colors for a brand and you want to be kind of more inclusive of like hey, we want everyone to be able to see what this is and like see how it's going to be conveyed even for people who are colorblind. Like that's a really great resource. Wow, that was good information because actually one of my former roommates was colorblind and so I was joking around, but then he was like, no, legit I am. And I was like, oh, are you really? I felt bad because, you know, we usually joke around and so that's why I was like, oh, whoops. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but uh, I was laughing before, not at what you were saying, but it's because since we're on color theory, what's your favorite color? Green is my favorite color. Actually, I know that a lot of people, they like, you know, like different pinks and purples. I think green is, to me, I like different shades of it, like emerald green, hunter green. Seafoam. Seafoam. Like sage green is huge. Honestly, I think like sage green and lavender have become like really big colors that people have started to use more. There's like this whole thing of like the color of the year and like different color schemes that people think that are going to be like huge. And so I've been seeing a lot of sage green and I was like, oh, that's like one of my favorite colors. I wear it a lot, not even knowing what I'm doing. It's like almost everything is green. It's, I'm not wearing it today. That's all right. Most of my closet uh, growing up was just black shirts. Really? Is black your favorite color? Uh, I mean, you know, it's, it's a color that goes with everything, but I'm honestly more of a blue person. Really? What shade of blue? I'm more of like a royal or even a baby blue kind of person. Mm. Because like, for example, it sounds weird, but like whenever I think about like if I had a f- my own faction of like knights, for example, what are the colors that would be in the coat of arms detailed in their armor? So I would want silver, gold, and like a royal kind of blue. That is such a cool way to think about it. Like if I was to have like a family crest or like knights, what would I dress them in? Or like how would I convey like my coat of armor? Yes. What is House Caves' colors? It's emerald green and... I wonder if it would be like monochromatic. 
Because I think that I'd be like, yeah, we give it all green. <laughs> Throw a little bit of metallic in there. There we like, go. Give it some sheen. Yeah, I like gold. Gold is probably like my favorite metallic. See, I like gold, but I'm not a big fan of yellow. Yeah, there are different kinds of golds. There's like white gold, yellow gold and stuff. I, because like jewelry wise, when I'm thinking about it, I like yellow gold. But yeah, gold is such a strange, because I don't like gold in like a 2d kind of just like color but i like gold if it's like a metallic like an embossment or something like that so if i am putting like a yellow in something it's always like a muted yellow that's how i feel too and it's nothing like sometimes yellow is needed Mm -hmm. but it's just that for example it sometimes may look a tad cheesy especially if it's like neon yellow oh yeah of course like you know if you're at an early 90s rave that makes sense I mean, if you think about it, you can make a lot of colors work, just depending on the brand. Oh, yeah. Like, for example, one of my favorite shades of gold is called Vegas Gold. It's used by the Pittsburgh mm. Penguins. Oh, yeah. that I do like that yellow. I'm a huge, like, LA Chargers. I love that blue and yellow. It's very harmonious. Yeah. Though I'm not, like, a big yellow person, just, like, on its own. But I'm a half yellow person. <laughs> Technically, I'm olive, so I'm kind of yellowy. Exactly. Yeah. But you're more on the green side. Yeah. How about that? <laughs> there you go. Because we're taught, like, think about, like, makeup and stuff, like, color correcting, and you kind of understand, like, which colors kind of mute others or which ones go with different things whenever you're, like, putting that on your face. Think about you have to mix a bunch of colors up to, like, match your skin tone exactly. I could barely do that with a easel, let alone makeup. That... That was such, I had to take a class and we were talking about it a little bit earlier, but we had to take so many different kinds of art classes as our like prereqs before we could apply for the graphic design program for UCF, which I think that everyone should do that. You should really go and explore different types of art before you like settle down, but you don't even really have to settle down. You can like still have that, but go and explore all these different fields. But one of them was like a painting class and we had to learn about mixing colors and It's not just, you know, like when you're trying to get a purple, it's not just red and blue. Like you're adding a little bit of black. You might add a little bit of yellow. You might get like a little bit of this just to get that exact shade and how many colors actually go in to get one. So it's like the difference between just a regular purple versus a lavender per se. Mm -hmm. Or is nightshade considered like one of those? Nightshade's like that really like deep purple, right? I believe so. It's also the name of a deadly flower, but I also know that it's like the name (laughs) of a certain kind of purple. It's like, did you watch cartoons growing up? Are you talking about nightshade? Like the, isn't it like a villain or a hero or something like that? No, it's just, um, have you ever seen Teen Titans? Yes. So like I'm thinking Raven. Like that, oh, yeah. like that kind of purple where it's like, I feel like, yes, her outfit's black, but I feel like there's still some like really dark purple mm-hmm. undertones to it. So just something like a rule of thumb that I've just kept for myself is I'll never do like an exact white. I'll never do like an exact black. I like, you know, like a little bit off, like a charcoal that's like almost black, but it's not black. With a very, very subtle drop of gray. Oh, yeah. And a black with like that hint of purple in it. It's like such a deep purple that it's almost black, but you can tell that it's still like a little purple. I think that that's probably one of the blacks that I've used. Got it. Um, the most. And speaking of deep purple, did you like that band? Deep purple. <laughs> I, I don't think that I've actually listened to Deep Purple. Smoke on the Water. Oh, oh yeah. No, I think everybody who's learned guitar probably does that, knows Smoke on the Water, but that's the only Deep Purple song that I would probably know then. I mean, it's iconic. Yep. I think that that was the first riff that I learned on the guitar. Do you play guitar? I haven't played the guitar in a while, but I started learning in seventh grade and then I played it throughout middle school, throughout high school. And so I haven't picked it up since I went to college because I couldn't bring it with me. Fair. The school. Yeah, but then, you know, it's like what you said before, try different types of art, and technically Mm -hmm. that is a different type of art. Oh, the best way that I can think to not, what's the word? It's like, the best way to like not get burnt out is to know what other things interest you, and you have to like explore those other creative fields. I like reading and writing, so- Nerd, just kidding. Super nerd, but like another creative way that I like to delve into is like, I like- audiobooks and listening to that kind of art or painting or it doesn't have to just be graphic design. I'm not a huge 
drawer, illustrator, but you have to go and like put some other times and be creative in other ways. Because if I was doing computer graphics all day, I would just be burnt out. And like, I need to be able to put my creativity other places. Because at some point people are like, make a logo. And I was like, I've been making logos for 24 hours straight. There are <laughs> no good ideas left in this brain. I could just imagine like the, the fumes, you know, just yeah. coming out just like, I don't know. It's just, it's an engine that needs to have its oil change. There we go. Oh yeah. Like the backfiring pretty much of the brain is just like, I don't even know my own name at the, at this point. Feel that. I feel like that's really hard for creative people. And I'm sure like you understand too. There's so much that goes into like branding and even if you know editing or like filming is a way like your other creative outlet and it's like you can't do podcasting all the time oh yeah i felt it too and actually it's interesting that you bring that up because now that i think about it as creative people we have you know great ideas but at the same time sometimes we can't just come up with it on command and so how do you feel about applications such as like Canva, for example, to anybody who they need an idea, they go to a template and they basically change out a couple of words. I think Canva is great for people who need something like quick and they can do it at home. But I don't think that Canva is really something that they should rely on, especially I've seen a lot of people, they think that, oh, my brand, I made it all on Canva. And it's like, why are you doing that? Designers are extremely knowledgeable and important. I mean, obviously I'm a little bit biased, but think about it. You're going to Canva and there are only certain fonts that work in Canva or that are available there. There are only certain templates, da 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 You're starting to lose your uniqueness because everyone's pulling from this basket. And the whole point of your brand is like, you want to stand out and you want to be unique. And that's why getting a designer is so important because you're pretty much having them make you something unique and something that no one's ever seen before. So I think that a lot of companies, they don't value that as much as they should because I always use this metaphor, analogy, whatever. You have two white t-shirts. They're the same exact shirts. One has a Versace label or logo on it and one has a Walmart logo on it. The Versace one's going to be $80, whereas the Walmart one's gonna be three. People are pretty much just paying for that logo being printed on the shirt. And there's so much power in a logo. For, yeah. You know, just to create that kind of price power. Yeah. And your logo is going to be like the front face of your company. And so much can be conveyed like through your branding because we're all human. We're all going to judge something just based off of like what it looks like. And you can convey luxury. You can convey, oh, this is relaxed place. Oh, you should get really excited at this place. So you can you can convey so much with that and you might as well be unique and stand out from the crowd. And that's why I think like having a designer who doesn't use Canva is so important because at some point it's all going to start looking the same. I totally agree because I can sometimes scroll through like LinkedIn or like Instagram and I'm like, tell Canva they did a great job. Yep. I mean, for people who are doing like their wedding invitations and who okay, you don't, fair. yeah, like you maybe don't have it in your budget to go to like someone, though there are some amazing, even like stationary people. Actually, that was like my first job in college to help out with custom stationary and a lot of like wedding invites. And she's actually still here in Orlando, oh. Margaret Bellis. She's okay. really cool. Do tell calligraphy and designs. Check her out if you if you need stationery. Okay. But a lot of people do stuff for their companies on Canva. And I'm like, dude, it's all going to start looking the same. It's kind of like with the whole chat GPT thing in mm-hmm. that, sure, you can have it write everything out. But at the same time, you need that human element because now they're even starting to make, it's like fact checkers, but for AI. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. And I think that you kind of like need that human brain to like come up with something new. That's kind of gives us some job security though, because AI, as sure you can make that do stuff, but at the mm-hmm. same time, the human brain can come up with some pretty good stuff that a computer can't. And so I mm-hmm. guess that's kind of, like I said, job security for creatives, because as long as you can keep coming up with fantastic ideas, I don't think our jobs are going to go away. Well, think about it. Who are you designing for? Are you designing for computers or are you designing for humans? 
is a computer going to really be able to understand their audience as much as a human is? Because you're going to be able to be like, oh, I'm a human. What What's something that I know that I would like or what's the progression of all of this? You know, you kind of have to understand the sense of your audience. So a computer is probably not going to be able to do that completely. It's going to try its best with AI, but it's so much easier to be a human and design for other humans. Exactly. And as a graphic designer, logo designer, you know all about that. I try to, at least. <laughs> <laughs> We're all just trying out here. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Allie, that was all very insightful. And now we're going to find out more about you in the bonus question round. So oh, Perfect. I'm excited. Allie, you're awesome. And thank you so much for dropping that artistic knowledge on us. And so now with that being said, we're going to find out more about you in my favorite part of any big DK Energy episode, which is the bonus question round. 10 questions that you do not know about, however, are clean enough that you will have a job afterwards. So okay. Miss Caves, are you ready? Oh yeah. Bring it on. Excellent. So Question number one, you've been selected to recreate the logo for one of your favorite brands. What's the brand and how would you go about it? You know what? I'm going to do my favorite coffee shop that's here. We actually went before, Stemma. I think they have such great products and pretty much just like a background as to why I'm going to design the logo for them. They are a mother and daughter owned coffee shop. They're Colombian. I think that they're just like really great and it's like really cool to see a woman owned business. So you would go with a coffee bean, but how I would do it is I would probably do like one side of the coffee bean would be like a bigger woman, kind of like the mother of it and like the other side so that they kind of like create that coffee bean look would be like a smaller woman. So like that shows that mother own and then probably some like Colombian like specific coffee leaves around there. Put it in a circle. I think that that would be Stemma for me. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah. I love the thought process as well because it's always just cool to think what's going on in other people's brains because you're like, never really saw it that way. Yeah. I mean, that way you can kind of convey of, like the ownership of it, more of like what their company is. And I think that that's such a cool um, aspect of it. And plus, I love coffee. Fair enough. (laughs) Cheers. Cheers. (laughs) Question number two, dream vacation and itinerary. Italy. My itinerary is I would wake up, I would have coffee, I would hopefully get on a boat and then sail around the Amalfi Coast and go to some of their beaches, see all that cool stuff. And um, I would come home, I'd eat a lot of food, not get fat or gain a single pound because that's the dream. Excellent. I would probably have an Aperol spritz and go to bed. Awesome. Actually, no, I'd go out a little bit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> while, while you're there, why not, right? Yeah, I would go out. And then I would get home at a prompt 3 a.m. There we go. <laughs> Three? That's rookie numbers. You should be going inside when everybody's waking up. I'm trying this whole classy thing on for size. I'm getting home at three. Question number three. You're at a gallery showing off your work, and three of your favorite artists come and admire your work. Who are they? Well, if they can be artists of any type. Any type. Stevie Nicks would probably be there. Chip Kid, I think that he's great. He's a book cover designer and he made the Jurassic Park. I think that he's just like a really cool guy and he's like very interesting. So he would be there. There's this woman, I don't know her name, but I followed her on TikTok and she has her own agency out in California and it's like seashell designs or something like that. I would I would probably have her because I feel like she's super knowledgeable and she would give me a true critique opinion. So her, unfortunately, I do not know her name, but I will find it and I will tell you so that you can literally put her name above my face. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Excellent choices. I don't know what goes on in the minds of those artists, but I'm sure there's something cooking up there. We're bringing them back from the dead. I don't care. Mm-hmm. Question number four. <laughs> Eddie Van Halen invites you to hang out with him for a day anywhere in the world. Where do you go and what do you do? Mm, We are going to the recording studio or we are going to like Vegas. I feel like Vegas would be a really cool place to go with Eddie Van Halen. Plus, I would obviously love to see him perform. I would have to also bring my dad (laughs) because... He's an honorary guest. Oh yeah, we'd all be on a on a three person adventure. That's a pretty good adventure. Sounds like an odd but a funny movie. Yeah, it would be like The Hangover, but just not The Hangover. Hopefully. Yeah, no teeth missing or anything like that. Oh my god, yeah, that would be bad. I would probably be the one that's like on the roof. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I can imagine that actually. Yeah, I'm on the roof the whole time, sunburnt. 
Nothing wrong with that. At least you're not down where the tigers are. Thank God. Question number five. You're in charge of creating a music festival. What's the charity being benefited and name six of the performers? The charity would probably be something to do with animals. I love the Wildlife Conservation Society. I think that they're really awesome. Six of the performers. All right, here we go. Great. And you are allowed to bring back two dead artists. Two dead artists. Okay. All right. So the entire band of Fleetwood Mac. So we're bringing Christine McVie. You could just say Fleetwood Mac and that would count as one entity. Okay. Fleetwood Mac. We're going to do country. What would be a big country star? I think we would have to do Morgan Wallen. I like Morgan Wallen. Like, hot take. I like. I kind of like Morgan Wallen. Let's see. Taylor Swift. I, th- I like Taylor Swift. I love Meg the Stallion. Meg the Stallion. This is like a really, like, hot look of people. I'll do Greta Van Fleet. Ooh, Chris Stapleton would be pretty good. Okay, I like Chris Stapleton. We're gonna throw him in. Sounds like a great lineup. You're right. It is a potluck of people. Question number six. Adobe has hired you to create a project that you have free reign over. What's the project's topic? Which app are you using to execute it? And where is it being put? Hmm. Adobe, call me. We're redesigning your stuff. I think that like it, it's great. There are just like some functions that need to need to be fixed. So we're doing the UX UI portion of adobe just like the product making it accessible for people we're making it a little bit cooler looking we're doing that so what i would be doing because of prototyping we're going to be using adobe xd we're also going to be using illustrator illustrator for the initial like design portions of it but like putting it all in and like actually designing how it looks on the website on the app we're doing xd And then I'm probably going to use Photoshop to put it on mock-ups to pitch it to them. Okay, awesome. And so I assume it would be on their website and everything like that? Yeah. So there's Adobe Creative Cloud, that app. And it's just like, I look at it and like, especially their like help stuff that's on their website. I'm like, you're Adobe. Like, make this look cool. (laughs) You know? So sorry, but hang on me. Then then we'll talk and I'll make you look pretty. (laughs) There we go. Anyway, (laughs) number seven. What's a time that you felt powerful? I think that going through and like, it's perfect because it kind of like runs into art. A lot of the times when I told people, oh yeah, I'm going to be like an art major, graphic design and whatever, they all thought like, oh my God, you're going to be a starving artist. You're not going to make any money. Like get real comfortable at mom and dad's house because you're not (laughs) moving out. And I was like, no, this is something that I know that I want to do. Like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to be successful in it. And I'm excited. And so I think that I felt really powerful in the fact of like, I know that this is what I'm going to do. And no one can veer me off my path. And so now when they all started to see more of like my projects coming in, like, oh, this is what you're doing. Oh, this is what graphic design is. I think that I felt really powerful and I feel like I can trust myself to go down the right path and go kind of down something that like I know that I like to do and I'm not going to have other people stop that. So yeah, I would probably say that. That's awesome. Kudos to you. Thank you. Great job, Allie. Question number eight. Describe your perfect day. So I would wake up. I would have my dog, Ollie. We would go for a really, really nice walk in the morning. If it was a perfect day, I would wake up right when the sun is rising. I haven't done that in a while, but (laughs) um, I would walk with him. We would go to a coffee shop. We would go to the beach. We'd meet up with all my friends. We'd all hang out on the beach. Hopefully the beach is somewhere like super, super nice. We would probably get tacos. I really like little like beach towns like St. Augustine. It's kind of like where I grew up. So we would go into town that is kind of like St. Augustine. We would maybe bar hop for a little bit. Ollie's still there. So all of the places would allow him to go in. He would not be drinking any beer though. (laughs) Um, Yeah, we would do that. We'd hang out. We'd safely get home. Either that or like we would travel and it would be in a completely different place. Uh, Awesome. Hold on, Mike. Sorry, folks. Uh, the this camera's battery died in the middle of her answer, but we got the other, but we got her on the other camera, so we're good. Oh yeah. So, ex- sounds like a great day. Even though I'm not much of a drinker, bar hopping does sound fun. Bar hopping with with your friends, and you don't have to drink. If anything, like I kind of like the bar setting of you're just like there to be social. You know, I'm sure that there's like a sports game on, and you're just like kind of hanging out with your friends, like outside of your house. And if anything, like it could be a bar, it could be a restaurant, it could literally be like any kind of setting. I'm 
all for like a social gathering of some sort. And I'm just like, let's get out. Let's go do something, you know? Okay, fair enough. Yeah. I, I can see that. Question number nine. If you could live in the universe of any show slash movie or book, which would it be? And what's your role in that universe? So there would be two. Okay, so Ferris Bueller's Day Off, where everything just works out for him. I'd be Ferris Bueller. Okay. <laughs> Selfishly, because I would love it if just things worked out. Of course. In the most ideal situation. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> like, I would find $100 in my pocket and just be like, well, okay, I can <laughs> skip school and no one will know. All right, if I put it back in, will I get 1000 <laughs> Yep. <laughs> in Ferris Bueller's world, probably. Either that or, I don't know, like, I feel like it would be really cool to have superpowers. So maybe in the Mar- Marvel universe. What just, superpower would you have? I would like to be able to be invisible. I think that I could get into like concerts that way and just walk right in. And then the metal detector goes off. It's like, is this thing broken? Yeah. It's like, what the heck? Yeah, no, I would I would do that. Like, I'm not a big flyer. I'm not a big heights person. I can do without strength. It's, that's fine. Either that or knowing where lost things are. Honey, where are my keys? Um, oh, they're, they're under the couch, honey. And then it's just like, oh, where's Jimmy Hoffa's body? It's it, it's at these coordinates. I would probably like help with a lot of cold cases. I think that, I mean, I like true crime. I feel like a lot of, a lot of people do nowadays, but I would help a lot with cold cases um, if that was the case, or I would probably not lose my keys nearly as much as I do. <laughs> Fair enough. But at the same time, that's a very beautiful sentiment because that would give a lot of closure to some families. Yeah. And uh, Allie, we're having such a great time. We're unfortunately at the last question. Aww. And it's a question that I ask everybody, but the answer is always vary. And that is, what is your best, most recent accomplishment? Honestly, I think that being asked on this podcast, I like see that as an accomplishment. I think that it's so great what you do and kind of like giving people like a platform and just kind of like they can come on and like talk about things that they're interested in. And so being recognized by you, I think that that's an accomplishment on my end. So I'm going to say that being asked to come on the podcast was my most recent accomplishment. Oh, well, I am so honored that I could do that for you, Allie. Oh, thanks. Well, Allie, um, this is the end of the show. You've been fantastic. And um, I know you're very busy and you're probably taking this weekend to, re- to recuperate your artistic mind. But thank you so much for giving me an hour of your time. Oh, of course. Or Anytime. Two. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's all right. Exactly. <laughs> you can have all the time you want. Excellent. Well, Allie, for teaching us about logo design and graphic design, that's why I think you, Allie Caves, have big DK energy. Awesome. And so uh, we're going to put all of her social media links in the description box below. And Allie, is there anything you want to say or promote before we head out? Thank you for having me on. I think that, like I said before, what you do is amazing. Um, and I am just really excited to to be here and kind of be a part of the Big DK crew. <laughs> so um, yeah, no, if anything, be kind, be cool. All right. Excellent. Just be kind and be cool. Be kind and be cool. <laughs> I like it. Short and sweet and to the point. Yep. Well, if that's all if that's all said and done, I'm Danny K of the Big DK Energy Podcast, and we're signing off.